It is our distinct pleasure today to host a Black History Month event uh, sponsored by Herndon High School and uh, students from Herndon High School. And uh, the theme is the African American Contributions to American Cuisine. And I would like to introduce right now the coordinator for this event, Ms. Elise Ashby Arrington. Elise. Oh, wow. Um, good afternoon. I'd like to thank everyone for coming out. I would like to thank Jackie Dresser, the home ec teacher, and I don't know what it's called now, so please forgive me. Family Consumer Science. The Family Consumer Science teacher at Herndon High School and the students for volunteering with their arms twisted to present today. Um, before we go further, I'd like everyone to turn their phones off down to something that will not make noise during the presentations. The young people are already really excited, so we want to make sure that we give them our undivided attention. Uh, let's see, I have done this event, this is my fourth year now. I had planned to quit last year when my son and his friends graduated from high school. And Brenda called me and asked me, and I have this thing where I don't say no too often. So I said yes, and then I reeled Jackie in to help me out here. So again, I want to thank everyone. Jackie, would you like to say a few words? Hi, I'm Jackie Dresser, and thank you so much for coming out today. I heard from Elise a couple weeks ago, and I thought, sure, <laughs> why not? So I was able to get some of my students to come in and help today. And um, during the week, with the help of Mr. Coleman, who's a security guard and a cook extraordinaire at Herndon High School, he also used to own a bakery, but he's really shy about telling anybody that. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it's fantastic. And he helped us with all the recipes. We made, gosh, black-eyed peas with smoked turkey, um, sweet potato pie, potato salad, chicken wings, cornbread, um, collard greens. You have a good feast after <clears throat> this is over. But and you I'm have sure to stay in order to eat. Quickly. Yes, yes. <laughs> but um, I couldn't have done it without my students. And also, I have a little club at school called FCCLA, Family, Career, and Community Leaders of America. So anytime you have a great idea, we want to help out in any way that we can be a part of the community. So enjoy and bon appetit. <laughs> Thank you for coming. <laughs> the way this is going to work is that the students are going to come up, introduce themselves, and read. Now, most, they all got this today. So I ask you to bear with them as they go through this. This is, an all, this is also an opportunity for them to have a public speaking um, exercise. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Matthew Cordova. I'm a senior at Herndon High School. And uh, today, right now, we'll be talking to you about African-American influences on American cuisine. Food is a huge part of the African-American culture. African-American dishes are closely connected with the slavery of Africans in, in America. Many of the vegetables, fruits, and cooking styles used today are the same ones that were used by African slaves that were brought to the States. The distinctive flavors and ingredients in American African-American cuisine have made it popular with people of all backgrounds across the country. The slave trade brought about half a million Africans to the U.S. One of the primary roles of slavery was cooking for their owners. Because African cuisine was typically heavy on greens, so it became that of Southerners. When slavery ended, many poor former's slaves continued cooking for the more fortunate, both in their homes and in restaurants. Therefore, many beloved American dishes have African-American origins. Slavery brought many previously unknown foods to the U.S., foods like okra, eggplant, black-eyed peas, sorghum, which is originated in Africa, sesame seeds, and watermelon quickly became standard fare in the South and elsewhere. The term soul food became popular in the 1960s. The origin of soul food, however, are much older and can be tracked back to African, Africa and to Europe as well. For such as rice, sorghum, known by African cuisine, were introduced to the Americans as a result of the transatlantic slave trade. They became dietary staples among enslaved Africans. They also compromised an important part of the cuisine of the American South. Whoops. <laughs> Um, where was I? Many culinary historians believe that in the beginning of the 14th century, around the time of early Euro-African exploration, European explorers brought their own food supplies and introduced them into local African diets. 
Foods such as corn and cassava from the Africas, turnips from Morocco, and cabbage from Portugal would play an important part in the history of American cooking. African-American cooking. When the Europeans began their African slave trade in the early 15th century, the diet of newly enslaved Africans changed on the long journeys away from their homelands. It was during this time that some of the indigenous crops of Africa began showing up in the Americas. Thank you. Hi, I'm Melanie Martieri. I'm a junior at Herndon High School. And um, so I'm going to read about the trade routes and exploration. So in the 1400s, Europeans began to explore the African continent, and food and cooking techniques were often exchanged. The Europeans introduced Africans to cabbage from Spain and turnips from Morocco. Spices and other condiments would have been traded between the culture as, cultures as well. African cuisine began to spread throughout the known world as those explorers returned to their homes. And um, so contributions and influences of the slavery. So as early as the 1600s, Africans were brought to the New World as, slave, as slaves. They would often bring seeds from their native crops with them. Okra, yams, watermelons, and shorgum were crops known in Africa long before they were introduced to the United States. After a long day working on the fields, many slaves prepared stews and soups. The vegetables they grew in their gardens and the cuts of meat slave owners refused became a basis of these meals. European enslaved fed their captive workers as cheaply as possible, often with leftover waste foods from plantation, forcing slaves to make do with the ingredients at hand. Enslaved households, vegetables consisted of, top, of tops of turnips, beets, and dandelions. Soon African, soon African American slaves were cooking with new types of greens, collard, kale, cress, mustard, and pokeweed, all bitter weeds that grew everywhere. They also developed recipes which used lard, cornmeal, and offal, offals, <laughs> sorry, um, disregarded cuts from meat such as pigs, feet, oxtail, ham hocks, pig ears, pork jowls, tripe, and skin. Cooks added onions, garlic, thyme, and bay leaf as flavor enhancers. Slave owners provided their slaves with poor parts of the pig, such as small intestines. Chitterlings were, were a dish of poor people in medieval England, and the name was adopted by the African Americans through their European slave owners to chitlins. Some African American slaves supplemented their major diets by gardening small plots given to them for growing their own vegetables. Many engaged in substances, fishing, and hunting, which yielded wild game for the table. Foods such as raccoon, squirrel, opossum, turtle, and rabbit were until the 1950s. Very common, fair among, and then still predominantly rural in Southern African American population. Since African Americans have heritage that span the globe, there are more influences on the food than just those that originated in the South, including Creole cuisine and dishes influenced by traditional foods from the West Indies and the Caribbean. African-American soul food originated in the southern region of the United States. <clears throat> According to the African-American re uh, registry, um, it spread to areas with large black populations, such as Chicago, New Orleans, uh, and New York City. African-American uh, African cuisine is also referred to as soul food. It or originated uh, out of the uh, need to make uh, hearty meals with the le with the least describe describable uh, cuts of meat uh, and meager meager uh, produce, uh, during the African American slave trade, slaves were left to make their own meals uh, from whatever flavor flavorings and ingredients they had available to them. Since African slaves were often forced to give up their culture, including the uh, including their African names. Uh, the slaves held onto their uh, heritage through the dishes they made in America. Soul food uh, derived from prized southern dishes during the African, um, uh, excuse me, American slavery era. 
Uh, soul food was mostly was mostly known as southern or comfort comfort food, um, and is now the foundation for bringing back memories of family family dinners and special uh, special celebrations. Uh, this me this method of cooking also introduced the foundation from which many popular dishes are made from made from today. Between three hundred and sixteen nineteen, the first the first group of African the first group excuse me first group of Africans landed in America in Jamestown, Virginia. African American slaves were farm were farmers cattle raisers and uh, fishermen and introduced several plants and seeds to plant such as black eyed peas, orca, sweet sor sorghum, uh, and watermelon, watermelons as part of Africans' crops and, food, and foods. The slaves created their own meals from the leftovers that their uh, masters did not eat. They often exchanged recipes verbally with each other uh, which led to the development of African American cuisine. This was how many. This was how many of their foods uh, were gathered for their meals. Although their love for cooking included pork, uh, sweet potatoes, collard greens, and spoon bread. Breakfast was considered uh, the most important meal of the day. A typical breakfast consisted of hot cakes, hoe cakes, and molasses. molasses. How's everybody doing? Uh, my name is Malik. Uh, I'm sorry. Oh, I go to Westfield High School. Um, I'm a senior. I'll be graduating this year, hopefully attending uh, Radford or Howard University. Um, I'm going to be talking about soul food. Um, soul food is a term used for ethnic, ethnic cuisine food tra traditionally prepared and eaten by African Americans of the southern United States. Many of the various dishes and eating ingredients included in soul food are also regional meats and um, comprise a part of other southern U.S. cooking as well. Um, the style of cooking originated during, uh, during American slavery. African slaves were given only the leftover and undesirable cuts of meats from the masters, while the white slaves' only offering owners um, got the meatiest cuts of ham, roast, etc. Um, we also had only vegetables grown for, for ourselves. After slavery, many, many being poor could, only, could afford only offcuts of meat, along with offal. Um, farming, hunting, and fishing provided fresh vegetables, fish and wild game, such as possum, rabbit, squirrel, and sometimes water, uh, waterfowl. Africans living in America at the time and since um, more, than made do with the, more than made do with the food choices we, ha we had to work with. Dishes or ingredients commonly found in soul food found uh, food, soul food include biscuits, black eyed peas, butter beans, catfish, chicken livers, chitlings, or chitlins, some people call it, um, <laughs> uh, chow chow, collard greens, cornbread, uh, cracklings, fat back, fried fish, bluegills, or uh, fat, uh, sorry, fried fish, fried ice cream, um, grits often served with fish, ham hocks, hog maws, hog head, cheese, hot sauce, lima beans, macaroni and cheese, mashed potatoes, milk and bread, uh, neck bones, pig feet, red, red beans, ribs, rice, sorghum syrup, um, American, uh, American dish of yellow corn and butter beans usually cooked in butter, sweet potatoes, turnip greens, and yams. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Gabriela Lopez. I'm a freshman here in high school. <laughs> I'm going to be talking about African-American cuisine, now soul food, slash soul food history. In the 1960s, Southern style cooking by black Americans was renamed soul food in honor of black cooks who prepared food during the slavery era. era. 
It was also uh, it was also a reminder that these cooks paved the way in the development of African American cuisine, now soul food. Today, people from all walks of life, young and old, enjoy enjoy soul food cuisine. Soul food is also prepared in many households in America for family gatherings and special celebrations. The foundation for soul food was laid many years ago, and today the tradition lives on poverty. African slavery, slaves were only given the least desirable cuts of meat. Things like pig's feet, offals, and other tough cuts, scavenger fish like catfish and wild, wild game, including squirrel, possum, and rabbit. After slavery, many African Americans were too poor to afford anything else. This poverty made African Americans cre creative in their cooking and led to dishes some considered deli delicacies. <laughs> Pick, pickle pigs, feet, shitter, Shittlings and many other dishes resulted from that creati creativity. <laughs> young girls learned to prepare meals, soul food history. During that time in history, young girls learned to prepare traditional foods such as fufu, which, which is made with vegetables and pounded yams. Fufu was often served with soup, stew, or roasted me meat. The native food were yams, vegetables, rice, and ground nuts. African, Africans were also very skilled in frying, roasting, grilling, boiling, and steaming their foods. They also had speci special talents preparing wild games and planting small gar gardens, including wild greens and fruit. Women often worked 16 to 18 hours in fields, then prepare one pot meal for their family. Thank you. Hey guys, Matt again. <laughs> um, I'm gonna talk to you about unusual meats and barbecue. Slaves were given the less desirable cuts of meat portions. Um, their owners discarded, which are um, beef, neck bones, chicken livers, chitterlings, which are clean pig intestines, yum. Ham hocks and hog jewels uh, and pig's feet became standard in soul food. Likewise, the slaves were able to trap squirrels, rabbits, and possums to provide protein in their diet and catch catfish, bluegill, blue and crab pie for their tables. Many of these meats and fish are still found in soul food menus today. Historically, West Africans simmered meat, such as chicken, goat, and fish, in stews. On their arrival to America, the slaves practiced frying both meat and fish um, to prevent spoiling of produce. Southern fried chicken with its unique blends of spices, spices remain a popular dish in today's African American cuisine, as well as an overall national favorite. Fried chitterlings or chitlins and hog maws made from pig intestines and stomachs respectively are simmered and fried and served either on their own or with rice, macaroni cheese, or collard greens. West Africans also simmer ham hocks and add collard greens to create a traditional and low-cost African-American dish. They also dip various types of fish like catfish and whiting into flavored cornmeal and deep fry. African-American use a variety of meats to prepare their meals. Different portions of poultry, pork, and other animals are used in dishes served among this culture. For example, families may use beef and pork ribs, gizzards, intestines, and pig knots pig snots, tails, or ears to create their meals. Fish and goat are also other meats that are used as sources of protein. The way these meats are also prepared come in a variety of styles as meats are fried, barbecued, and used in different stews. These stews are compromised of meats, vegetables, and often rice to make a complete meal. According to Sally Bernstein, the word barbecue is derived from the West Indies word barbacoa. Which, refer, which refers to a certain way of roasting meat. It is likely that African slaves transported from the West Indies to the South learned this word from West Indians and translated into their own style of cuisine. In the South, African slaves, in the South, African slaves began roasting their meats on a spit and painting sauces and flavoring directly 
onto the meat instead of serving the sauces on the side, as was to traditionally among the white Americans at the time. Africans brought the custom of basting the meat while it cooks with them from Africa. Though the barbecue usually means some kind of pork in modern African-American cuisine, when it was first invented, it referred to any kind of meat cooked over a fire and basted with sauce. Thank you. All right, my name is Gabby, and I'm an eighth grade student at Herndon Middle School. And I'll be talking to you about a variety of vegetables and fruits. Survival of the slaves was aided by the West Africans' tradition of using and cooking all edible parts of vegetables, plants, vegetables and plants, resulting in these becoming staples of the African-American diet. Popular vegetable dishes include simmered collard greens, ham hocks, seasoned with spices and pepper. Cornbread accom accompanies, wait. Yeah, cornbread accompanies most savory dishes as well as hush puppies a variation of cornbread made with onions and spices. Chow chow is a sp spicy relish made with okra, corn, cabbage, and green tomatoes and is used as a topping on bean dishes or as a condiment. Mashed potatoes creamed with butter and condensed milk is another favorite. The certain crops such as apples and peaches are native to the American South. Others such as okra and sweet Sweet yams were brought to the Americas via the slave trade. Fruits and vegetables common in American, African American cuisine include yams, okra, watermelon, peaches, mint, corn, and cornmeal, hearty greens, potatoes, and cabbage. Vegetable dishes are often seasoned with bacon or other cuts of pork. This is a practice that dates back to the slave trade when undesirable cuts of meat were one of the few things slaves had to season their food. Anyone who enjoys collard greens and black eyed peas or okra and tomatoes owes thanks to African American soul food. These vegetables and others like sweet potatoes, cabbage, butter beans, and squash prepared southern style have their roots in the dishes prepared by slave cooks for their owners. The only vegetables enjoyed by the slaves were the ones they grew themselves. As the women were often employed in the house to cook, they brought them with them their style of cooking. Meals were seasoned with peppers, onion and garlic, and soul food crept into the American culture. Vegetables play an important role in the meals created by African Americans. Items such as rice, yellow vegetables, such as corn, and green items such as green beans and cabbage are used to prepare a number of dishes. Black eyed peas, okra, and sweet potatoes are the other types of vegetables that are used by the African American culture. Collard greens are another type of ve green vegetable that can be found as a side item in many dishes within this culture. Fruits also hold a vital position in the African American culture. Items such as watermelon, peaches, and grapes all serve as desserts or snack items. Um, hi, my name is Patrick McKenzie. I'm a senior over at Herndon High School and I'm gonna be talking to you about contemporary soul food and current um, popularities. Soul food is a category of food specific to African Americans. Africans transported from their homeland to the colonial so South brought some of their native food with them. According to Sally Bernstein, African slaves who cooked native food with their with them, according to, oh, my bad, I just, re I just reread the same thing. <laughs> uh, okay, um, according to Sally Bernstein, African slaves who cooked for their masters learned how to combine their native food with traditional Southern cuisine to create a whole new variety of food. Today, creating African American cuisine is considered an art and new twist on traditional um, soul food. Recipes appear every day. Traditionally, soul food meals are hearty, rich in flavors, and relatively easy to make. Today, African American food has become widely known as soul food. Soul food restaurants can be found in small cities, large cities alike. Some of the most popular soul food items are fried chicken, cornbread, collard greens, and macaroni and cheese. 
During the 20th century, African-American cuisines began to incorporate more ingredients. Today, soul food largely consists of fried fish and chicken, as well as cornbread, collard greens, grits. According to the African-American registry, today, uh, today there are few African-American communities that do not have soul food restaurants. Urban areas in the South especially have high concentration of such businesses. Many of our most most popular restaurants like Popeye's, Bojangles, and Cracker Barrels have menus influenced by African-American soul food. Catfish, fried chicken, dirty rice, candy yams, and cornbread all have their origins in this cuisine. African-American soul food has a long history in the United States, extends as far back as the 1400s. The popular cuisines has its roots in Europe and Asia and predominantly in Africa. The native in inhabitants of Africa and the slaves who, are, who were brought to the United States are the biggest reasons we enjoy this delicious food today. Um, so I'm going to be reading about collard greens and yams now. Um, so while collard greens themselves were not introduced into American diets by Africans, they appear in a lot of African-American dishes in modern America. Soul food instructs chefs to prepare these dark leafy vegetables with traditional African methods. According to Sally Bernstein, frying leaf vegetables in oil and spices to create a hot veggie dishes in African tradition, not European. Europeans typically ate plant leaves raw in salads or by themselves until Africans incorporated things like collard greens into American diet. According to africanfoods.com.uk, collard greens contain a lot of magnesium and other vitamins the human body needs to stay healthy. So yams, um, yams or sweet potatoes are not native to North America. According to Sally Bernstein, Africans introduce these brightly colored sweet roots to the Americas. They are very popular in Caribbean, Caribbean cuisine and play a large part in African American food today. From the yam came dishes like can, candied yams, warm dish, a warm dish with butter and caramelized brown sugar served over the sauteed roots. Sweet potato pie is a popular dessert in the world of soul food. In this dish, sweet potatoes are mashed until smooth and mixed with brown sugar and other ingredients before being baked into pie crust. The resulting dish is similar in color and flavor to pumpkin pie. According to africanfoods.com.uk, the introduction of the yam into American diets may have some health benefits, including protection against developing diabetes and helping a lower insulin resistance. African Americans had a heavy hand in influencing Cajun cuisine, which is found in Louisiana and southern Mississippi. Orca, okra, and African foods. Uh, African food is a main ingredient in Cajun gumbo. Rice, which slaves introduced to the South, is found many found in many Cajun foods. Uh, the, spi the spiciness found in the Cajun in the cuisine also comes from the African American influence. Due to the large variety of cultures that have become a, a part of African American group, part of the African American group, many different, many different styles of foods are used within the culture. Uh, for example, southern areas of the country, such as Louisiana, may use cre Creole, uh, Creole style dishes regularly. These meals include items such as gumbo and jambalaya. Other types of dishes uh, that you may find find considered considered um, soul food items include cornbread, grits, hoe cakes, and hush puppies. Many restaurants have been developed to showcase the soul food cuisine that has become a staple in the African American community. Common soul food dishes uh, include beans uh, such as such black black eyed peas uh, and red beans 
and rice, uh, oxtails, recipes featuring various pork, pork parts, such as hog mugs, pork chops, and chitlins. Fried chicken, fried, fi fried catfish, ribs, bake baked macaroni and cheese, cornbread, gumbo, corn pudding, and potato salad. These dishes are seen in many foods, many soul food restaurants at African American reunions, celebrations and gatherings, and as a part of everyday meals in African American households. Okay, so now I'm going to be talking about drinks and desserts. Desserts considered to be part of African American cuisine often contain fruit or vegetables. Dishes such as fried apples, sweet potato pie, peach cobbler, and sagatsumi cake are usually our sole food favorites. Tradition, traditional drinks include those that are composed of sweetened water, such as molasses water, molasses water, which is a combination of thick molasses, water, mint, and citrus juice. The West African diet was comprised of a lot of starchy food, like yams. Yams and sweet potatoes continue to be used in African-American cuisine, with sweet potato pie still proving a popular dessert. Rich and creamy pound cake uses a whole pound each of butter and sugar and is traditionally baked for family gatherings. Another favorite is deep fried ice cream made by rolling ice cream and cookies and then deep frying in oil. Pulses became an important part of the African diet and were introduced to the Americas by the slaves. Pinto beans and ham hocks seasoned with spices and garlic salt make a wholesome traditional savory dish. String beans and pinto beans can be cooked in a similar way. Hop and John derived its name through children hopping around the dinner table before dinner and consists of black-eyed peas, rice, and ham hocks. Hi, I'm Jaden, and I'm gonna be talking about health concerns. Traditionally prepared soul food tends to be very high in starch, fat, sodium, cholesterol, and calories. It contemporary, in contemporary times, some traditional style soul food has been implicated in the abnormally high rates of high blood pressure, diabetes, clogged arteries, strokes, and heart attacks suffered by African Americans, especially those living in the southern and central United States. An important aspect of the preparation of soul food was to reuse cooking of lard because many cooks could not afford to buy new shortening to replace what they used. They would pour the liquefied cooking grease into a container after cooling completely after cooling completely, the grease resolidified and could be used again the next time cooking required lard. With changing fashions and perceptions of healthy eating, some cooks may use preparation methods that differ from those of cooks who came before them using liquid oil like vegetable oil or canola oil for frying and cooking and using smoked turkey instead of pork, for example. Changes in hog farming techniques have also resulted in drastically leaner pork. By the 21st and late 20th century, some cooks have seen or have even adapted recipes to include vegetarian alternatives to traditionally, to traditional, sorry, ingredients including tofu and soy-based analogs. Critics and traditionalists have argued that attempts to make soul food healthier also make it less tasty and even less culturally, culturally and ethnically authentic. Isolated ingredients of soul food diet do have pronounced health benefits. Collard and other greens are rich sources of several vitamins, minerals, and fiber and small amounts of omega-3 fatty acids. They also contain a number of phytonutrients which are thought to play a role in the prevention of ovarian and breast cancers. However, since traditional style cooking of soul food vegetables requires high temperatures and or long periods of time, the water soluble vitamins are either destroyed or leached out into the water in which it is cooked. Additionally, the high qu quantity of oils used in preparing such ingredients means the final project product might contain only a small and, and wait, where am I? 
Small amount of vegetables, relatively amount. Okay, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Peas, rice, and legumes are excellent, inexpensive source of protein. They also contain important vitamins, minerals, and fibers. Sweet potato are tremendous source of beta carotene and trace minerals and have come to be classified as anti-diabetic food. Recent Recent animal studies have shown that sweet potatoes, are, if consumed plain and in modest amounts, can stabilize blood sugar levels and lower insulin resistance. To reiterate, over centuries, soul food has been cooked and seasoned with pork products and fried dishes are usually cooked with hydrogenated vegetable oil, which is a trans fat. Unfortunately, regular consumption of these ingredients without significant exercise or activity to work the calories off often contributes in disproportionately high occurrences of obesity, hypertension, cardiac circulatory problems, and or diabetes. It has also been a factor in African Americans often having a shortened lifespan. More modern methods of cooking soul food including, wait, include more using healthful alternatives for frying and cooking stewing using smoked turkey instead of pork. Hello, all. my name is Alejandro, and I'm a student at Herdon High School. And today I'm going to be talking about cooking methods and techniques, soul food, and history. Cooking was mostly done, done on open pits of fireplaces with large swing black pots and big iron cast skillets and were prepared by black cooks. Cooking on open pits are now used as grills. The slaves did not use measuring cups or cooking devices. They had no cookbooks or formal training in, cu in cooking. They had no, no one to learn from except each other. It was a great challenge for them to create good food with primitive tools and very limited ingredients. They also cooked such food as biscuits, baked beans, a variety of breads, and barbecue. They, they used large amounts of fat, sugar, and salt to season their foods because it was readily available. Salt was also used as preservative since there were no refrigeration or other methods to keep food cool. When testing their foods for doneness, they used their own senses, and when they felt the need, they added a pinch of seasoning to enhance the flavor f of their dish. They knew by their instinct when their food was done, as many cooks know today. That's also why you see many recipes that read a pinch of salt and pepper or baked until golden brown. Cajun and Creole were also a familiar style of cooking and, and included such popular dishes as jambalaya, bread pudding, desserts, dirty rice, gumbo, and red beans and rice. During that time in history, black cooks verbally exchanged recipes as they remembered them, and today many Southerns still cook without, res without a recipe. Just by a simpler, but just by simply remembering main ingredients and adding seasonings and spices to their taste. This, this way of cooking was, uh, sorry, this way of cooking has produced many great cooks. By the end of the Civil War, black Americans cooked in cattle farms and were pioneers as farmers and survived off the land. During these hard and difficult times, they adapted their own cooking habits and techniques and formed many new ones along the way. Thank you very much. Again, we would like to thank you for coming out and enjoying this lovely presentation by the students. If you are interested, we would like to have you try some soul food now. Everything has been cooked with smoked turkey because it is a healthier alternative, as we just learned. So with that said, please meet us in the back in a little bit. You can come back out here and eat, OK? But you're just getting a taste, just to see what soul food is like. Thank you again.
Hi, I'm the board of uh, the art space of Herndon, and I am here with Jackie Dresser. Dresser, who has just presented a wonderful program with uh, the youth of Herndon and the surrounding area, all about African American cuisine. And so please tell us a little bit about the program and how you got involved. All right, well, last year I had Elise Arrington's son in my class, so she contacted me only two weeks ago. And I'm always interested in involving my students in local activities and community um, you know, awareness. And so we were asked to do this, and I thought, sure, why not, even though we're in the midst of, <laughs> we're just about and to start our Chinese unit. A class called yes, gourmet um, foods. yes, gourmet foods, international foods, and hospitality. So hospitality is a huge part of it as well, to make foods for other people and to learn that skill. So how many people were involved? Well, I have approximately 200 students at Herndon, and there was a gentleman, Mr. John Coleman, who helped me with um, the soul food this week because it was kind of a last minute thing. And then I had my students helping me as well, um, of course, during the week. So next year we're hoping that we can continue the tradition because I think that Mrs. Arrington is moving to South Carolina. This was a <laughs> wonderful introduction, and I must say that I learned an awful lot. I have always loved sweet potatoes, for instance, and I had no idea they were that good for you. Oh, they are. Turns Anything them, orange is like in the inner circle of foods for you. It's so good for you. Turns yes. around diabetes <laughs> and fantastic things like that. So now I won't feel so bad eating them. <laughs> <laughs> now you should feel good. <laughs> yeah. So how long did uh, the children, the young people, get to work on their reports and their presentations? Well, about the period of around a week and a half. And first, Mr. Coleman and Mrs. Arrington and I met for an interview. I mean, not an interview, we just sat together and had a meeting and then decided the menu and then I went ahead and I shopped last Sunday with my very patient husband at Wegmans. <laughs> Although I had to get the right kind of smoked turkey. I went to Wegmans. I ordered food from this place. We get food in from Winchester called Skanks or Schnanks or something. And they call themselves Skanks. But um, I went to shoppers. I finally found the smoked turkey at shoppers because it couldn't be pork. But it was really fascinating, you know, to think that collard greens used to be actually weeds and that this food was handed down from the master's table. And, you know, I didn't even realize it at the time, but cornbread, fried chicken, all those wonderful foods that we love, potato salad, it's all soul food. In fact, a few um, days ago, one of my students who's um, from the Middle East said, Mrs. Dresser, what is soul food? And I thought, wow, you know, we just take for granted that these kids already know what it means, but they don't. So I, I definitely want to continue the tradition. I think that there's so much more that we could do with it. Were the young people shy at all in their presentations? They seemed very knowledgeable. Um, well, I just really give a lot of credit to the students that came today on a Saturday and um, volunteered to do this. But um, in addition to making the food, all, I had all my students write down different facts on some cards and we made a big banner for the um, art space. So I hope that you can take a couple pictures of that. <laughs> and you have some exciting ideas for possibly next year with uh, little theatrical. Oh yes, I think it would be wonderful to do more of a reader's theater and perhaps even have the kids um, take up a character like you would at a Renaissance Fair or Colonial Days or something. And then they could actually demonstrate how to make certain dishes or, you know, take on a character. I just think that would br really be fun and bring it to life. And I do have a theatrical background. I used to do costume making. <laughs> so, and I like to do things, you know, I love to learn and have fun as well. So, got to make it fun. <laughs> and about how long was this entire presentation? I know. Today, um, well, it was minutes. two to four, but the students spoke for about 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the good part, the yummy part afterwards. Yes, yes. <laughs> and oh my gosh, let me just mention what we made. Sweet potato pie, black-eyed peas with the smoked turkey, uh, potato salad, fried chicken, cornbread, collard greens. Um, gosh, I can't even think of anything else. Some <laughs> That's a lot of food. foods as well. Some and what? Eritrean foods. I oh, um, I sort of a wrapped bread. It looked like we didn't we didn't bring that, but apparently some other people, and you'll find out from Mrs. Arrington, some other people were asked by her to bring food. Surprise. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so you didn't know maybe what you were eating, but you enjoyed it, right? <laughs> I haven't eaten anything yet. Well, oh, go and try. Yes. It's, it's a great adventure <laughs> is awaiting you in there. Oh some yes. Really good foods. Thank you.